Well, good afternoon, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here this, this afternoon to be part of this special event. Um, if I can just reflect on a couple of things. Uh, firstly, it's uh, really pleasing to see Steve Renouf here um, as a sporting hero. We need more sporting heroes to be involved in this special event and speaking out about uh, why this uh, violence against women is uh, extremely important. It's great to see the police here. They do a marvellous job out there in the streets. I can't imagine what we, we, we would do uh, without them. I guess I became an ambassador last year on the 25th of November, which is the anniversary of White Ribbon Day at uh, Parliament House. I recently just commenced with the Parliament as new Senator for Queensland, and I didn't hesitate to uh, sign up to the, the cause, because the reason behind White Ribbon Day is extremely important. As a father of two beautiful girls, a uh, lovely wife and mother-in-law, and the list goes on, sister and so on, um, I couldn't think of a, 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 a no better word than cause than to become an ambassador for White Women Day. But I set myself a couple of objectives for this year, and that was to recruit new, new ambassadors and to uh, organise events on, on this uh, particular day. I was successful in recruiting uh, two ambassadors, a, um, a councillor out at Pine Rivers, or Morton Bay Regional Council they call it these days, Mick Gillen, and also a uh, chap uh, that is a secretary of a, a recently uh, female dominated uh, union, the Australian Services Union, David Smith. So um, it's good to have uh, certainly those objectives uh, fulfilled. And the other uh, matter was to ensure I had, had events. I just came from an event up in Queensland Rail, Railway, and prior to that I was out at Super Chief Bordeaux. But um, beyond that, I guess my involvement and concern about uh, violence against women arose out of my previous career. I was involved in the trade union movement for 20 odd years and I've represented a lot of women in cases most extremely uh, through the Anti-Discrimination Commission, um, matters where workplaces did not have policy dealing with sexual harassment and those sorts of matters. So it was important to make people aware and I guess that's where we need to have this education tool out there explaining to people that it is an insidious uh, scourge on our society and that's why we make, need to make sure that we um, get rid of it. Um, just some stats, we've heard about the, the uh, one in three women experience violence in their relationship. That's actually 1,000 women per day that um, are involved in that. And the Queensland Police handle more than 30,000 cases in Queensland alone in domestic violence each year. But there's still you know, nine in 10 of those cases that aren't reported. So we need to make sure that people are reporting these incidents. It's no good being silent. And on society, and this is based on old figures, the 2004 report on access to economics, $8.1 billion it costs our society to deal with the domestic violence. I just want to reflect on something outside of what people might uh, seem as an a individual perspective when it comes to domestic violence. It's far more reaching than just the individual. I've actually um, been provided a letter from a, a father a couple of weeks ago that uh, expressed the, the concern and, and uh, appreciation of bringing this to the attention of as many people as possible. And it's titled A Father's Story. He says that the, the verbal abuse of my daughter by my hus husband started on their honeymoon with him telling her she was too fat, too lazy, ugly and dumb. This continued for two years, completely demoralised her and made her think she was worthless. Then after the birth of two boys, he started dragging her around the house by her hair and throwing her against the wall. He then started kicking her out of the house with no money, no clothes, nowhere to go. She used to sleep in a car because she was too ashamed to tell anyone about it. Finally, my daughter had had enough. She went to the police and had him changed for aggravated assault and domestic violence, and an order was taken out against him. She was then removed from the house by the father, and uh, they were set up in a unit. Unfortunately, uh, things deteriorated and she had to return, but the uh, order is still on the, the, the person, and hopefully uh, the, the, we're in, in a situation where we, we hope it won't happen again. So as a father, this particular person felt helpless and depressed, 
and concerned about their daughter so you can appreciate the extent of uh, what this has on, on people beyond just the victim. So as a male, I, I think, uh, I must say I'm pleased to have a couple of people down the front here from the Muslim uh, community to come out here today and be involved in this particular matter and uh, it's important that our, us as males speak up against this scourge. So never silent, never violent, we should never ever forget that. Thank you very much.